All right, let's talk about the military. Okay. Well, the U.S. military is still required to have updated COVID vaccines or else... (laughs) But that may change soon under the new defense budget bill. This is a really strange way to remove these mandates, but okay. No, it's not. Can I just, can I stop you there for a second? Well, we're going to talk about the sort of trade-off, but okay. No, no, what I'm just saying is they always shove crap in these mandate, these bills, these defense authorization bills, like that have nothing. Well, this one specifically does, but they're always like tangentially related. And then they do this for political reasons to score political points at the last minute. Uh, Yes. True. Now, as a reminder, the vaccine mandate has taken its toll on the military. Listen how to how fighter pilot John Bowles put it. He was grounded because he would not take the vaccine. Um, he spoke to Clayton earlier this week. Uh, this is not a good order of discipline issue anymore, and I think everyone knows that. You know, these people like myself and the tens of thousands of others uh, who said, I don't know about this vaccine. I don't think I want to take it. You know, we're not criminals, but we've been made to feel like it. We're not extremists, but we've been made to feel that way. You know, we're not radicals, but we've been made to feel that way. And that's really where I think the damage has been done. And I'm sure everyone's aware of the Atlantic article recently of pandemic amnesty. Um, you know, I think there should be responsibility for the actions taken uh, for those who did legitimately uh, break the law and knew they broke the law. But that's not my place here as a military member. I'm here to say that at the very least, let's start rebuilding as a military. Let's start building trust in each other because this is not how teams treat each other uh, at all. And you know, we're just using the processes that were afforded to us by our own military, by our own constitution, which is what we swore to defend. We're doing exactly what we were told to do, which is support and defend the constitution and stand up for our rights and liberties because we don't lose those when we join the military. So that's my message, I guess, to the American people and to my leadership is that, you know, let, let's let's rephrase how these unvaccinated service members are being treated. Let's reattack this and let's at least fix the problem of our national security first, because that's the most pressing issue. So he later um, he also went on to say in that interview, which I encourage you to, to seek out about um, recruitment is down and morale is down. And this absolutely has taken its toll on the military at a time when we can ill afford it, because whether we think we're at war or not, we are. Um, so the defense budget that is on the table right now has this language written into it. It says Uh, that no later than 30 days after the date of this enactment of this act, the Secretary of Defense shall rescind the mandate of the armed forces that the armed forces be vaccinated against COVID-19 pursuant to the memorandum dated August 24th, 2021 regarding mandatory coronavirus disease 2019 vaccination of Department of Defense service members. This means that the vaccine mandate will be lifted, uh, which is a... Victory, I would say, for those like um, like the pilot bulls who wanted this to be lifted, but it doesn't help anyone who was fired for refusing to comply, nor does it offer them, it, because this is a budget, right? Uh, nor does it offer them any back pay, uh, or reinstating with back pay. Lieutenant Bowles says that this has to happen. He says this on the matter. I personally will not rest on this issue until we have service members reinstated with back pay. We have to right the wrongs and restore trust. Just ending the mandate won't stop the disenfranchisement and harm done. Band-aid fixes won't correct the gaping readiness wound. So obviously this is not how you want members of your military to feel people who are serving their country. Um, So uh, he, he later said last night on Twitter as he was following this, he, he said, this is still a win. Just the fact that they're willing to do this. It's just the first step. And they continue. They, they hope to continue to fight for their rights to not have been terminated uh, without pay. So question, why is this being shoved in the defense budget bill? Basically, it's a gimme to Republicans from Democrats. Uh, they're throwing them a bone so to speak. Democrats want this new $847 billion defense budget for 2023. We've talked about how that was even more than the president asked for, but they wanted more shoved in there. Republicans were about to balk at the price tag, but they stood down after this mandate repeal was announced. Uh, White House Press Secretary Jean-Pierre, she says Republicans have decided they'd rather fight against the well-being of our troops and that Democrats believe this is a mistake. Watch. 
president. But every year, as you know, the uh, the NDAA has some provisions uh, we support and some we do not. And what the president's going to do is he's going to judge uh, judge this piece of legislation, this bill, uh, on its entirety uh, when that occurs. Again, there's a process moving, there's a process that's happening, and so we're going to let that happen uh, in Congress. I will note, uh, just to be very, very clear here, what we saw, what uh, what we think happened here is uh, Republicans in Congress have decided that they rather uh, rather fight against the health and well-being of our troops than protecting them. And we believe that it is a mistake what we saw, uh, what we saw happen on the NDAA as it relates to the vaccine mandate. Making sure our troops are prepared and ready for service is a priority uh, for uh, President Biden. The vaccination requirement for COVID does just that. I'll add one more thing, just a, just a little bit of a, a point, a data point here, so all of you have this. Look, before COVID vaccine existed, nearly 700 Department of Defense personnel and service members died of COVID. Almost 100 of them were active duty. And so since this past spring, there has been one death due to COVID. So vaccinations work and save the lives of our service members. So we believe that it was a mistake. <clears throat> okay. Someone in our chat points out the anthrax vaccine and what that did to our soldiers too. You know, tens of thousands of people affected by that vaccine. So we have a history of this, testing things on our soldiers. Yes. Hey, here, yeah. here go, go out to Bikini Atoll, which is where we're going to test the nuclear weapons, and just stand here. We want to see how this affects you. Hey, all you guys, just stand out here. Ready? Three, two, one, nuclear explosion. But we're going to watch you guys. Oh, okay, you guys all died of cancer? Great. Test complete. And in fact, uh, one of our friends who is military, um, retired now, uh, when the vaccine was rolled out and we were sort of talking like, oh, are you going to get that? Are you going to get that? Um, and she was like, you know, he, her husband who was enlisted, she's like, he has to get so many vaccines that most people don't for the military. So what's one more? I think that's what, that was sort of their attitude on that. Um, you know, but again, I, I just want to press her. What is the rationale behind the mandate though, given that now we have the switch of who is suffering from hospitalization and death? Uh, from COVID and how the CDC is saying which population that is, given that we now know uh, what the vaccine does uh, regarding transmissibility, I, I, I can't, I don't understand, no. right? And in fact, now Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin told the Associated Press he is also not happy about this. He said, we lost a million people to the virus. A million people died in the United States of America, but we lost hundreds in the DOD, so this mandate has kept people healthy. Okay, um, that's, that's correlation, not causation. He does. He's you can't prove this yet. Um, the data is unconfirmed since we have not seen the U.S. account for a distinction of people who died of covid and people who died with covid with comorbidities. We've seen some data come out around that. Other countries such as Finland has also done this and said, you know, we counted covid deaths with people who died within 30 days of a positive test. And now we're going back through it and we realize these people had comorbid comorbidity. Comorbidities. They had a dead and die. They had a velvet devotivity. Um and so what they are saying now is that they are uh, reassessing their COVID deaths down. We have not seen the United States do this. We probably never will. Uh, but also this statement also does not account for adverse effects. Uh, we ran down those claims in a lawsuit currently being litigated against the U.S. military when we did a show on Wednesday, November 2nd, if you'd like to seek that out. They were extensive. Um, we looked at data from the medical from the Defense Medical Epidemiology Database, DMED, which is run by the Depart Department of Defense, and it showed that the coding system that the military used to track health care of service members shows a huge increase in things like miscarriage, myocarditis, cancer, Bell's palsy, female infertility, and many other health conditions. Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin hosted a panel about vaccine injuries in October, and he revealed these numbers Holy of increased <clears throat> pathologies in the military these this was from a senate panel so now when you look at these increases we realize we want to be level-headed we can't establish a causality yet but we also cannot celebrate a healthy military and establish that causality to the vaccine mandate either we simply cannot 
And so for us to say or surmise, that's foolhardy. We should not do that. But, you know, again, causality is not, or correlation is not cause, causation. And so we are seeing these at the same time as the vaccine mandate is still in place. Keep that up there on the screen. That's unbelievable. I mean, ovarian dysfunction, 437% increase. Yeah. Migraines. And now we've heard a lot of this from pilots and other members of the military. And and John told me in that interview, like, you know, we're going to have that exclusively on Rumble this week. So you can watch that full interview with John. Uh, You know, testicular cancer, 369% increase. Yeah. Um, I have started to see, because I follow JAMA, the Journey uh, Journal of American, American Medical, Medical Association, Association um, that there are now studies that are starting to co- like a st- study other correlated factors of excess deaths since the pandemic. Um, and so I think that we are going to start to see more and more studies of things that are in the Tangent. radius tangential <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, for instance one this week that came out that said most of that that surmised that over 12 percent of ex- excess deaths since the pandemic are alcohol related because so many people were stuck in their home and developed drinking problems um, you know I don't know uh, it, I don't know if we'll get to okay that's 12 percent but what about the rest right are we gonna get the other 88 um, percent I don't know. Uh, and so again, I just want to be level headed because we can see these correlations. Um, we cannot yet establish causality. Uh, and, but what we do know, what now the CDC knows, what now, um, the white house knows, what every person knows is that the vaccine is not there to prevent transmissibility. We know this and that there is no rationale for a mandate. So at the very least, that should be repealed across the board. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at Redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to Redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.